Hey guys, Aaron here. Welcome back to the channel. I got the Schultz of America 5 horsepower 80 gallon air compressor here and I just want to show you how I hooked it up and wired it real quick. It is a 220 and needs to be wired thusly. Let me show you the uh, plates here so you can see some of the specs. If you want to pause on those, it comes with a pressure regulator as well. And all of this comes pre-wired when you receive it. The pressure regulator into the uh, electrical box right here, already done for you. For mine, it starts in that gray box right there. My fuse panel, I have a 30 amp fuse that is actually running 220 to the outside of this wall. Uh, on the other side of this wall in here, I have my welder that I had uh, 220 run to already. Here's that outlet for my welder. So right behind the drywall coming into here is uh, some 10-2 wire. Yes, that's right. Using 10-2 and the company confirmed that that is enough for this motor. So 10 gauge, it has a black and a red and a ground and uh, those fed into my welder right here. I'll show you. It is one of these typical 220 type connections. So behind this plate, I went ahead and I just pigtailed those two lines and extended them through the outside of the wall. Down here is where I ran the wires through and up into here into the box. Got this little eaten box and in here I warned people that this is wired for 220 because the uh, outlet type connection in here is not normally used for 220. If I unplug it you can see it's one of these. Uh, this is a cord that I found at Home Depot to fit my outlet. Uh, and so the top one is ground. The other two are each a 110 line. All right, this box just has a little Phillips head screw that you turn 90 degrees to come out. It doesn't actually unscrew. So this just slides straight off. That's what that looks like with the uh, back of the button there. And this is the wiring on the inside. So let me back out and show you a little bit. So this wire here is uh, coming down to the pressure regulator. So it comes up through this grommet into here and one side goes into the on off switch. It's just a disconnect and the blue wire uh, and then comes back out the red wire. Then we have two capacitors up here. We have a start capacitor and a run capacitor. Uh, so I did a lot of troubleshooting and testing with these when my unit did not work originally and turns out they were fine. Uh, so here is my wiring. So all I did is run that up into here. They supply this grommet on the side. So I have my white and black and then green for my ground. So the green just comes down here and ties into the back with all of the other grounds in here. And all you do is you simply take the black and the white and you put them here in 1L1 and 3L2. They're labeled slightly differently in the instructions, I think. Uh, so it was a little bit confusing, but that's where they go. You'll see that there's also a red wire on in each of them, and uh, they both go in the exact same connector. And they run down here to other terminals. They already come installed, but if yours is not installed like that, that is kind of the what it looks like on the inside and here in a1 you have another black wire that uh, is coming up from the pressure regulator so this is called a magnetic starter and the reason it is is because all of these uh, things are designed to only activate the motor when certain conditions are met when the pressure drops to a certain level as long as that um, knob is pulled out that means it's on if you press that in this will always signal that the pressure is not ready for it to be started and this little black thing right here is actually activated by a magnetic field so when 
uh, power is flowing in the correct ways, that magnet will be uh, pushed or drawn to the back of it, completing the electrical connection of this side all the way down here so that it will start your motor. So you can actually push that in with your finger, but uh, better yet, use a screwdriver or something else. That's one thing I had to do while testing it. If you press that in, then you will force the connection to see if the motor will run. Um, don't do that unless you're troubleshooting, but that's just how it works. And lastly, this little piece down here is uh, a fuse, essentially. So you can push that in to reset it, and you can use a little screwdriver to change the setting here um, for when it will trip. And you can almost read the little uh, settings on there. But again, the moral of the story is all you have to do, if everything works well, is take these three wires, put two in there, one down here, and you should be good to go. I should note that um, it is very important to make sure that those red wires are connected as well in there. And uh, for some reason, mine wasn't working at all first, so I checked all the connections of these wires and I switched where my black and my white ones went, which should not matter because they should both be the same, uh, and tightened everything back up and voila, it started working. So um, if you turn yours on and you're just getting like a click and nothing's happening, uh, maybe that's why. If you guys have any issues at all wiring this thing up, reach out to the guys that made this thing over at Schultz of America. They are a fantastic, great support group and very willing to help walk you through this. All right, guys, I got another full video on the setup of this thing outside of the wiring. So if you're interested, go check that out. I uh, hope you're subscribed to the channel. Smash that like button, and I'll see you guys on the next video.